Margaret yes, uh, Cahirlock, um, uh, can, yeah, deputies, I've listened very carefully to what uh, Deputy Tobin has said and Deputy MacDonald, um, and I share with you both the same sense of the great importance of the 1916 Rising and its central place in the history of our state and of the importance of remembering it and preserving the traces that remain of the events that took place at that time. And none of this is lost on the government, which I believe can look back with justifiable pride and satisfaction at the wonderfully successful and highly inspirational programme of commemorative events that took place two years ago. And they drew in communities from every country, county uh, in the country in unprecedented numbers uh, to pay respectful tribute to the 1916 leaders and to the sacrifices that they made on our behalf to give us our independence and our right to self-determination. But with regard to tonight's private member's bill, the government fully appreciates the constructive motivations that brought it about. However, for reasons I will clarify, I'm seeking to have further second stage consideration deferred to allow other initiatives come to fruition, which I believe will have a far greater potential to facilitate an appropriate regeneration of the Moore Street area in a way that will recognise its history and traditions and ensure that they continue to have pride of place in a part of Dublin that is indeed crying out for rejuvenation. Number 16 Moore Street is where the decision to surrender was made by the leaders of the 1916 Rising and numbers 14 to 17 were declared a national monument in 2007 as the most authentic complete and coherent collection of surviving pre-1916 buildings on Moor Street with clear associations to the rising. And each of the buildings has extensive original features, including plasterwork, partitions, uh, staircases, doors, floors, fittings and fixtures. The 18th century building form and profiles also survive, and most significantly, there's also evidence of the presence of the insurgents themselves in the form of the passageways that they burrowed through from building to building during the final phase of the rising. And earlier proposals to secure the restoration of the National Monument through a combination of funding from NAMA and a property exchange between Dublin City Council and the developer within the surrounding Dublin Centre development site did not materialise. The monument buildings were then acquired by the state from NAMA in 2015 with a view to having them open to the public in time for the centenary. And deputies will generally be aware of subsequent uh, developments, including the proceedings in the High Court, which uh, the deputies referred to, and in the Court of Appeal. And all this culminated in the establishment, as you know, of the Moore Street Advisory Group, which right now is working and making progress on finding solutions to the future ge regeneration of Moore Street in a way that reflects its history and culture, and most importantly, the events that played out there in the closing stages of the Rising. And this group was established by uh, my predecessor in May 2017, and its membership includes uh, Deputy Tobin, who's promoting this bill, and indeed Deputy O'Queeve, uh, who's here in, in the House, and Deputy Burton, and indeed Deputy O'Sullivan, who's also present in the Chamber. Excuse me, and Deputy Hahi also. It also includes 1916 relatives, groups, city councillors, and street traders. And its role is to represent and work with all stakeholders, including the owners of the site surrounding the state-owned national monuments at numbers 14 to 17. And the idea is to broker uh, regenerative, regenerative solutions that can be supported by all concerned. And the site around the National Monument extends from Moore Street to the Carlton Cinema on O'Connell Street and takes in most of the ground, laneways and buildings in between. And it is largely in the ownership of a single entity and equates roughly to the area that the bill envisages will be given National Monument status. And some of it is quite run down and parts of it are underutilised and it needs significant investment and vision to get back on its feet. But in facing this challenge, the Moore Street Advisory Group has as its guide the Moore Report Securing History, which was produced by a consultative forum that was set up by my predecessor after the original High Court uh, judgment, which Deputy Tobin was also a member of. And the report, which was unanimously approved of by all members of the forum, forum, including the Deputy, set out a range of recommendations designed to ensure that there should be appropriate recognition 
of the history of the street and its part in the rising, and that this will be reflected in the regeneration of the Dublin Central site. And right now, the Moore Street Advisory Group is actively engaged in meaningful and positive discussions with the owner of the Dublin Central site about the implementation of these recommendations and the future of the site. And I was pleased myself to learn from the Chair of the Advisory Group, uh, Professor Tom Collins, that these discussions are going well and in, in fact are progressing very positively in the main. And I understand that there is now a formal framework for engagement between the advisory group and the site owners. And this provides for open and frequent meetings between the parties to discuss options, to explore opportunities and to review progress. And I'm also aware that the owner has very significantly modified the previous plans for the site that may have been a motivating factor uh, for the deputy in drafting this bill uh, some time back. And the revised plans for the Dublin Central site, now being drawn up by newly appointed architects, are seen uh, to be much more sympathetic, uh, from my understanding, to its traditions and history than was the previous development, development that was conceived back, as you referred to, in the Celtic Tiger days. And I understand that they also envisage keeping buildings that were not part of the earlier design. The new plans have been shown to the members of the advisory group and indeed the deputy uh, will have seen them. And the chair is on record that the members were entirely supportive uh, of what was now being conceived. Indeed, the extent of the design change being contemplated may be gauged from the recent statement by the company indicating that it believes that a fresh planning approval will be needed and that this will be applied for next year. The talks between the advisory group and the landowner were possibly a bit slower to get underway than what uh, some stakeholders would have preferred, and that may also have been part uh, of what prompted the drafting of the bill uh, some months back. Uh, perhaps the deputy did not believe back then that the owner would engage to the extent um, of that is actually happening now and to such good effect. And matters have indeed moved on considerably since then. And there, in the meantime, have been a number of meetings between the landowner and the members of the advisory group that have provided valuable opportunities for both sides to sketch out their ideas and principles of what would work best for the area in the future. And I'm delighted that the revised plans are so respectful of the history and culture of the area and that they strongly embrace both its past and the street traders who give the area much of its character and appeal, that, as has been alluded to. And what is now in prospect is a much more sympathetic mix of residential, commercial and public realm. And this is, as I've already said, backed up by the chair of the advisory group whom I met recently and who has told me that the new vision has been very positively received by the members of the group. And the developer is also in discussion with my own department on possible cultural uses within the Dublin Central site. And this is another facet of the change of direction from the pre previous development proposal to an outlook now that would now welcome more cultural and public space uses within the site. And my department is looking into possible options, particularly within our own Gaeltucht and the culture divisions and in consultation with the Office of Public Works. In light of all of the foregoing, I'm absolutely convinced that rather than progressing Deputy Tobin's bill, the future of this part of the city will be far better served by all the stakeholders and members, including the deputy, uh, and you can see that the forum um, ha has been involved in the last number of years, to continue to engage with and support the ongoing process that is making such uh, positive progress under the stewardship of the Moore Street Advisory Group. The group is talking to and engaging meaningfully with the owner of most of the area encompassed by the bill. And real headway is actually being made to reshape the regeneration plans for the area in a way that is respectful to local culture and history and in particular to the event and the traces of the 1916 rising. And apart from the new plans being more sensitive to history, which are outlined, and heritage, they also have huge employment potential. And figures relating to what is now being planned indicate that it would generate up to 9,000 jobs. 6,000 of these would relate to the construction phase, but the other 3,000 will be long-term permanent jobs that will be based in the locality and be open to the local community. With the new planning application visit for next year, construction to start in 2020 and the redeveloped site to open in 2023, these jobs could come on stream relatively quickly and give a huge boost to the whole economy of the north inner city in a timescale that we can all look forward to. And this bill would make 
quite frankly, no useful contribution to that process. And while I accept that there may be positive sentiment behind it, Deputy, it's simply not necessary and not helpful nor, nor, nor useful at this time. It will not actually achieve anything worthwhile in terms of monument protection either. I mean, suffice to say that the bill would be no more than an ineffectual gesture, ultimately, insofar as how it would interact with the existing National Monument Legislative Framework. framework. And we have here an amendment to a generally applicable legislative provision for the sole purpose of dealing not only with a single issue, uh, but with just one individual case. And it's an amendment that quite simply does not work from a legal or procedural uh, point of view if, it, if its actual intention is, uh, is to bring the streets and buildings referred to in under the protections of the National Monuments Acts. And that is the objective. Uh, then it also envisages, and I think this is a very undesirable proposition, that the development of a large section of the North Inner City should be determined by the Minister responsible for the National Monuments Acts rather than by local representatives and the local authority under the planning system. That's hardly a good idea and hardly something I don't think the Deputy uh, Party would favour either. It's also the case that I'm in the process of bringing forward a comprehensive revision of the National Monuments Acts, which I would hope to see before they rocked us uh, in the next few months. And this will provide a much simpler and more effective way of recording and classifying historical monuments. And there will be an opportunity for all members of the House to input to that process and, and if they perceive there is a need, to look at how the updated protection regime would measure up against any specific challenges on the ground. And another reason why I do not consider such a limited case-specific amendment appropriate or necessary at this point. In reality, all the advancements of the Bill would do at this stage would be to create an unnecessary distraction and to introduce an unhelpful diversion into the discussions that are now underway with the owner of the Dublin Central site under the aegis of the Moore Street Advisory Group. These discussions are going well, they are yielding positive results and they have the potential to produce an outcome that will revitalise the whole area. And the Deputy hardly wants to jeopardise the 9,000 jobs that are in prospect and 3,000, as I said, of these will be permanent and located in the constituency of your Deputy Leader. Does the Deputy think that this is what the community wants? Do they believe that the present stagnation is what the street traders would want either? And I imagine they all want to see a renewed and vibrant area with thousands of people working in it and drawing in many more times more visitors to contribute to and to grow the economy and the supports and amenities that would follow. And the bill would certainly do nothing to bring that prospect forward. In fact, I would fear the opposite. And I want instead to give my support to the real prospect there is now of a positive meeting of minds between stakeholders to continue to encourage these parties to go on with their discussions through the Moore Street advisory group so we can all look forward to the beginning of the regeneration of this area, area that everyone has been crying out for so long. The buildings at number 14 to 17, complete and original, are in the ownership of the state and the government is ready to bring to fruition the restoration and 1916 commemorative centre project as soon as there is an agreed vision for the wider site that they form part of. And I want to protect these buildings, which include key locations from the 1916 Rising for the Irish nation and all its citizens, and in honour of all of those who took part in the Rising. The Commemorative Centre will complement the new visitor centre in the, in the GPO, and if we take a snapshot of that entire geographical area and consider the GPO, the proposed 1916 centre in Moore Street, the Tenement Museum, uh, which I opened in Henrietta Street, the proposed development of the Abbey Theatre and the Parnell Square Central Library and the connectivity between those sites, there is the potential for a huge lift uh, for the North Inner City area and I want to help rather than hinder that. And against the background of all the positives I have outlined and in particular the significant headway made uh, by the Moore Street Advisory Group, whose work is, is, as I said, currently at a key stage. I'm afraid that the Deputy's Bill can only be seen as having the potential just to upset all of that progress. And it could also put at risk the chances of a successful outcome in the future, and in turn, endanger investment in the regeneration of a significant part of the North Inner City, with all the consequences this entails for employment and for economic gain for the local community, for the street traders and for the local businesses that must be struggling in the present situation. 
And for that reason, the Government cannot agree to second stage proceeding while the work of the Moore Street Advisory Group is still ongoing and while it has a real and genuine prospect of succeeding, none of which the Bill would help if it were to continue at this particular time. Uh, Grimagat Karhilak. Thank you, Minister.